Hey guys, Riley Wilkman here from Clear Data Sports back again um, for another podcast here. This time I'm going to be going over the, well, really, really exciting times actually. We're going to be going over the uh, NCAA tournament, March Madness. Um, so really excited to get into that. But first, uh, I want to address the fact that, yeah, it's the first podcast in a long time where it's just been me uh, rather than me and Mark. So, you know, kind of a little different uh, shifting up things here. Uh, but he is actually currently on a radio show, I believe, uh, with with baseball stuff. So I'm going to be helping with baseball as well. I believe we have a podcast coming out um, within the next week or so, uh, which me and Mark will both be on for that. So I'm really, really excited to get the MLB season kicked off as well. But first, let's focus in on uh, yeah brackets, uh, NCAA tournament here. And uh, I've been sending out stuff over the last few weeks um, with conference tournaments, all that stuff, putting a lot, a lot of time into this. Uh, but it's something I love doing. Really, really excited to uh, yeah, get this thing started here. So basically with this podcast, I'm going to be showcasing the model. I'm going to be giving you my favorite to win. And I'm going to be giving you a potential upset, my like, a first round upset pick, which I really, really love. Some of you guys have already uh, deduced this with the model plays. Um, and then I'm going to be giving you a team as well. That's a uh, higher seed uh, that can potentially make a long or a deep run in the tournament. So, those are going to be my three, you know, showcase teams here, um, which I'll go over. Yeah, basically just kind of going over the model, showing you what this thing can do, and potentially what we can give you guys next year. Because uh, right now, you guys don't actually have access to the model itself, just the plays. Um, but next year, you know, potentially there's this one thing that I've been working on a lot recently. Finished it up uh, this week and used it to make my bracket. Um, this game, this, simu- uh, this single game simulator, um, which I mean, we could be uh, given to you guys possibly next year for you for you to use yourselves, not just to get plays from uh, like you've always been doing. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff, I think, um, and I'm really really excited to get into it. So yeah, let's waste no time and uh, let's let's jump right in here. And apologies if you guys have kind of noticed I'm a little stuffy, uh, have been a little under the weather. It's just that kind of time of year, I guess, for uh, for for my family, anyways. Uh, but yeah, so looking at this game simulator now, um, actually, first I want to address, we do have Virginia as the uh, heavy favorites actually to win here, and um, I, I know a lot of people have Duke. I'm going to show you my bracket as well. I'm actually going to pull up 538 too to show you their their uh, bracket and reference, but I have finished my bracket, and um, I'll show you that. So yeah, lots of stuff to get into. Uh, I really do love the NCAA tournament, though. It is one of my favorite times of the year, uh, especially, well, this will be my last year of this, but uh, especially in school, too. Um, everyone kind of just, you know, stops working and watches the game, so pretty, pretty fun for uh, for us anyways. But here's a 538 bracket. I know they have Duke favorites, um, and we are going to have Virginia favorites at actually 28% to win, uh, giving us 11% edge over at 538. So that's going to be my... Uh, my big thing there is going to be picking UVA to win. Um, and looking at UVA, now I have this spreadsheet compiled here of all the uh, Ken Palm adjusted stats. So these are all going to be based, these are going to be all the stats that are going into the final model. And these are the same stats that are, you know, making all the plays in the automated model day by day. But now they're just kind of out for you guys to see here. Um, and a lot of that stuff, you know, you can see like offensive two point, offensive free throws, uh, all that stuff. Um, is going to be, you know, the, breaking, breaking them up into sectors, like I said, and adjusting. So, for example, let's say a, a strong two-point team like like Duke uh, comes up against a strong two-point defense. They're obviously going to be expected to score a lot less uh, in the two-point sector. And that is actually one of the things I want to address right away is these sectors. Um, that is one of the main reasons why the main upset team that I have here. Uh, so in terms of a first-round upset, now I actually have St. Mary's in my bracket. I'll show you. Uh, in a second, I'll give you a little glimpse of that quick. Um, I have St. Mary's actually going all the way to the Elite Eight, and they're one of my main upset teams this year. I think they have a really, really solid defense, and I think, and most importantly, not only just a solid defense, but a, 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 a solid uh, three-point defense, actually fourth overall in the country, according to our model here. And looking at this, uh, this so this is the game simulator. I think this is really, really cool, and I did put a lot of time into this, this thing here. Uh, you have game forecast, where it's actually going to show you um, based on the team that they're playing, uh, they're, let's, for example here, St. Mary's is going to be expected to score lower than average offensive free throws, uh, higher than average uh, defensive free throws, meaning they're going to be allowing more free throws, or more points off of free, free throws rather than normal. Uh, lower than average defensive two points, so l- less uh, points from two-pointers, 
and higher than average three points. That's just because uh, Villanova is going to be a very strong three point t- three point shooting team. Uh, but that's actually one of the reasons why I love this matchup so much for St. Mary's is because it matches up perfectly for them where uh, they are strong suited to score on two pointers, 74th in the country, and their offense isn't all that amazing. But they're going to slow this game down a lot. And this is, this is going to be a really, really slow game. As you can see, Villanova's tempo, tempo as well, uh, 333rd in the country. Uh, St. Mary's is actually lower than that even, 347. So very, very low tempo game. But St. Mary's is an amazing three-point defensive team. And that is why our model is giving so much edge on them here uh, because they are expected to, to uh, halt uh, Villanova's offense pretty much because Villanova actually looking at their splits on offense, sixth best uh, offensive three-point shooting team, 340th best offensive two-point shooting team, meaning they are going to absolutely struggle to score here if St. Mary's can shut them down uh, beyond the arc. And that is why I love this this uh, play here. So that's going to be my main upset, of course. St. Mary's the 11th seed, Villanova the 6th. And looking at this key battle as well, uh, the formula for this is an absolute doozy. Um, but it's basically going to show what, what's going to be the most important sector to watch in this one. So what's going to be the deciding factor? And how we determine that is kind of looking at the averages of of how strong each of these sectors are, for example. So why how how this determines Villanova off of three-pointers is going to be the most uh, well, is, is going to be the uh, most important sector to look at is because uh, St. Mary's is a strong defensive uh, three-point defense, and uh, Villanova has a strong offense in that regard. So whoever, gonna, whoever wins in that battle is most likely going to win in this game, and that's exactly why I have that pointed out here. So I think just another cool aspect, but I love, love, love these forecasts, man. Like, I've been, I've been uh, using these for all my bracket picks, you know, not necessarily going... Uh, 100% based off the model, but uh, you know, using them just as a basis for each game. So you know, looking, let's say like you have a team like Wisconsin who struggles to, to score three pointers, but they're going up against a, a, a terrible three point defense. Like you know, you can adjust for that. So stuff like that is really really cool, and definitely stuff stuff I use like I said for my own bracket. Um, but potentially something we can give you guys next year to use for yourself. So like as in you guys can you know take this thing and actually plug in the games yourselves rather than me just getting out the plays. Um, but yeah, so pretty cool stuff there. Um, now, actually, yeah, I want to go back and look at the team rankings as well because, as you can see here, Villano- or Virginia, which is my favorite to win, um, actually only the fifth best net ranking, which is basically just offensive ranking minus defensive ranking, only the fifth best, but because of our adjustments, and this is why this model is special, uh, it's not just going to be the highest rated, o- the highest overall teams as are going to be expected to beat the, the lower over- overall team every time because look at this. Duke, number one overall team in the country in terms of a model, widely regarded as the strongest team in the country, and I would certainly not deny them being the strongest team in the country overall, but our, our model has them uh, two-point dogs to Virginia at this point, even though they uh, beat Virginia twice this season. Uh, of course, both times they did have Zion, and uh, they do have Zion now as well, um, but I think, yeah, in this regard, when our model adjusts for this, uh, I think it's really cool because... If you're looking at Virginia's defense, fifth, sixth, and seventh in three sector in their three defensive sectors in the country. So an amazing defense, number one easily in the country, not even close. Um, actually, I want to show you how <laughs> how far away that is here. Uh, defensive, let's go defensive smallest to largest. Yeah, three points separating the first and second uh, lowest defensive rating, which you want low. Uh, for defense so crazy crazy stuff for virginia just an amazing defense i think they're in terms of their defense and offense um the way they slow down the tempo i think they're just the best overall team this year even though disregarding duke you know duke actually actually is a strong defense too looking at their defense they're good they're actually a good three-point defensive team uh something you wouldn't really expect out of a duke team but i mean no they're actually really really solid they have a lot of length uh cam reddish rj barrett and uh trey jones um you know work in the front or the uh in the backcourt there, I think, uh, they're, no, they're a pretty strong defensive team, but overall, Virginia is just miles, miles better than everyone defensively this season, and like they normally are, but this season is just exceptional, but the addition is that uh, they do have DeAndre Hunter, and they have, they have a nice, uh, I think they have a really ra- well-rounded attack as well, of course, there, are, there have been games where they've shown weaknesses against, like, Florida State, for example, and even the, the two times they lost to Duke, I mean, they weren't really that bad, per se, so... I think uh, yeah, the only really real game that kind of shocked me in terms of their performance was Florida State, and it kind of makes me a little bit worrisome. But at the same time, I think they have a really, really easy route. Uh, now, looking at my bracket, I was just going to use this as a reference to, sh- to show you matchups here. Um, for example, I do have Oklahoma beating Ole Miss. And all this stuff isn't just based off the model. Uh, some of it's going to be just based off of my own personal you know, feeling. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's going to be a mix of both, generally. 
for me. I, I just try to have fun when I make the bracket. I'm not really competitive. I mean, I mean, I'm not too competitive with it, um, but uh, still fun though. I, I, I just love making these. Um, but anyway, so looking at their route, they're either going to be playing Ole Miss, Oklahoma. Pretty easy game, in my opinion, for both of those. And then, actually, the fourth and fifth seed, um, Kansas State, Wisconsin. Um, actually, Oregon, I, I'm one of my other brackets. Oh, actually, I've made, I think I've made two iterations of, of the brackets. I think I'm going to stick with those two. But the other one, I had Oregon beating Wisconsin. So that's kind of up in the air. Actually, both those games, uh, that's uh, 5-12, 4-13. Both those games kind of up in the air. UC Irvine, I could see winning as well. But if, let's say, it plays out so that that 4-5 seed both win, either the, either of those teams, two teams play into Virginia's hands, also going to be playing a very low tempo, and it's going to be easy for Virginia to kind of control those games just the way they like to. Wisconsin just is not, and but actually, speaking for both of these teams, let me show you this matchup as well, Wisconsin versus Kansas State. Um, both of these teams just have terrible offenses, and just and inefficient as well. I mean, if you look at their offensive ratings, look at this. Uh, Kansas State's even worse than Wisconsin. But I think, I mean, personally, actually, my family is uh, from Wisconsin, so we do watch a lot of Wisconsin games. Uh, I uh, consider myself a Wisconsin fan as well. Uh, but their, uh, yeah, their offense, just from watching these games this year, their offense has been very, very poor. Uh, Kansas State as well, 238th in the country in offense, just just tragic. So if they play Virginia, Virginia in that uh, what will be the Sweet 16, I think that Virginia can control them. I don't think anyone in their sector – uh, up to the, up until the elite eight has a potential to beat them. Now, as you can see, I do have St. Mary's actually getting all the way, and I have my big upset this year uh, is Colgate over Tennessee. I know the model has I think three three point edge over the markets, uh, but I, but Colgate's been really really hot uh, shooting threes as well. So just another little tidbit for you guys to potentially look out for. Uh, but now looking at my team that I have really going far, and I know I had St. Mary's going to the. Uh, um, Elite Eight as well, so that's another team. But my main team I really wanted to look out for is actually Wofford. Now let me show you a potential matchup I have. Um, Wofford, Kentucky. That's going to be the big one where uh, if they can really beat Kentucky here, I mean, I think they can really put their stamp on this tournament. Only three, well, well, about 3.8, yeah, 3.8 uh, point dogs here. I think this really plays into Wofford's hands, though. They're actually a really solid uh, defensive two-point team, and Kentucky is basically only a two-point scoring team can't really shoot the three um, and Wofford is especially good eighth in the country right now uh, in offensive three points so I love this matchup Wofford has been a great shooting team and I think in the tournament um, especially some of these games where you know teams get hot when, I mean those three-point shooting teams that get hot for example Villanova last year easily the best three-point shooting team in the country when these three-point shooting teams get hot in the tournament. It's really, really hard to keep up with them if you can't score at a consistent rate. And considering that Wofford actually had, you know, kind of counters Kentucky's uh, best, I guess, attack, which is by far two-pointers. And actually, they have the third best uh, three, uh, three uh, free throw um, uh, rating in the country as well. Um, so, you know, they're going to be driving a lot. Uh, P.J. Washington, uh, who's the other... I always forget the other guard's name is really good, but uh, they have a they have a well-rounded team. I don't see them going very far, but I think yeah, Wofford really has great upset potential here. Then moving on after that one, of course, I skipped the Seton Hall game. I know a lot of people saying that Seton Hall has a potential to upset Wofford, you know, certainly within the realm of possibility. But I really think Wofford is actually a very very strong team, underrated as well. Now looking at the North Carolina game that could potentially come up as well, which I actually don't have happening. I have Auburn beating North Carolina, but nonetheless, looking at this potential matchup here. Uh, North Carolina, that's why I love this one as well. North Carolina, 253rd in the country in three-point defense. What, Wofford could just absolutely let it rain on North Carolina here. And this could be t potentially become one of those teams that just, you know, like, uh, for example, uh, Loyola Chicago last year just becomes like a, a fun, lovable team. I think they're going to be really, really exciting to watch, especially if, they, you know, they keep spraying the threes. And I think that's potentially within the realm of possibility here that they beat uh, – beat North Carolina, and of course the tempo is going to be, like I said, this is why I love this uh, thing here. The one thing to look out for is that, you know, Wofford does like to play a low tempo. They, this game is going to be faster than average for them at 72. Their normal is 65, so something else to look out for. Um, but yeah, no, I really like this combination. And, and looking at just their offensive-defensive splits, uh, offensive uh, 32nd in the country, 43rd in defense, so they're a very, very well-rounded team here in Wofford, and they have a, a specialized three-point attack. I really, really love this team. 
I have them getting to the Elite Eight and losing to Auburn, actually. And Auburn is another team to look out for as well. So a lot of nice little tidbits here I think I've, I've given you guys. But that's going to be all for me right now. Um, I will be back with Mark for the MLB. Really, really excited for that. So lots of exciting things happening. Uh, no EPL this week, so that's going to be an off week for that. But we can focus on the uh, tournament and, of course, the MLB coming up as well. So I hope you guys have a good rest of the week, and I will see you very soon. Bye.